Here's one common thing that I've been doing this for six years. Has it been doing okay so far? You guys loving it? As I uh, <clears throat> watch the people get up and talk, I remember uh, recruiting, and I have no problem with the word recruiting, because I've been a recruiter since 1989 when I started my own company, in a Denny's in Irving, Texas, in the smallest little booth, and you never forget where you meet someone who changes your life. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, darling. So, Here's a common thing that happens with everybody that's been up here. If you don't understand, I, I, I hear their names. Uh, Shelly Johnson. The first month I met her, she dominated my life. No, when I say this, she dominated my life. Gene, I got a three-way call for you. I got a three-way call. You don't understand, just one time. Mike Gerbic, you heard his name. Mike Gerbic, don't, Gene, Gene, I just need, just need, no, seriously. And for the first 30 days, these people were in my lives. They dominated my life. Brent Gove dominated Rob Flick's life for 30 days. He just went, look it, you got to get on a three-way call with me. You got it. There's a commonality with all the top people. They want to, they love to dominate my life for 30 days. The best thing about it is then I don't see them for a while. Bill, same thing, right? They just, Gene, I just, want, I just want to see you do this over and over and over again. This next gentleman dominated my life for 30 days. See, this is what it hit about me was, now, for the next last two days, he's been my golf partner. And, you know, he's my golf buddy for the last two days. But I remember him dominating my life for 30 days. You just remember this because, Gene, just one more three-way call. I promise. Just two, no three this week. Can I do two more this week? Can I do one? Hey, how about Saturday at 8 o'clock? 8 a.m. Is 8 a.m. okay with you? And this is what they do to me. So I want you to think of this. You've got to look up your line and dominate somebody above your line for 30 days. I want you to take that back home. I want you to take that back home and say, I am going to dominate their life for three. They don't even understand. I'm going to make them get on three-way calls with me forever, okay? And don't call me. <laughs> Everybody got that last part? Don't call me, because you're all in my downline somewhere. Okay, let's hear it for Mr. Randy Bird from Oregon. Portland. Come on, Randy, my golf buddy. Take him home, baby. Take him home. How are you doing? How are we doing? Oh, when they said, yeah, you get to follow Sheila Fergeron today. She's only got 10,000 people in her organization. That's going to be awesome. But you know what? She's got the heart of gold. And from the second I met Sheila, I was in love with a person. And then she brought me to Brent, obviously. Brent and I were buddies first. Um, I'll tell you our story of how we met. He doesn't remember it this way. Good thing he's out of the room right now, I think. But um, Brent was being recruited to KW by Maureen Barker. A lot of people remember that name. And uh, Maureen said, hey, come down from Reading, down to Sacramento. We're having a, a little KW event, and I want you to kind of sit with this guy. He's a Remax guy. You're a Remax guy. You'll get this guy. You'll love this guy. He's a big teddy bear. And so I came down. We sat, I sat next to him kind of, you know, weirdly. He didn't know what was going on, but I was shadowing him all day. And typical Brent back in the day, phone, phone, gone, not paying attention to anything KW all day long. So he leaves the room, and I follow him out. And I'm sitting on the couch out in the lobby where that's where all the deals are made, right? Tom Daves, you, you make the deals in the lobby, not in the conference room. But we're sitting outside, and we're hitting it up. We're becoming friends. And I'm loving this guy, literally. He's like my brother from another mother. And this is probably back, I mean, at least 2000 seven, eight maybe. And um, I just really, really enjoy this guy. He ends up joining KW, becomes team leader at Roseville, and then we go to a team leader boot camp probably, I don't know, six months later, and that's where he remembers our official friendship starting where we became brothers from another mother, and, and really it's been an amazing, amazing journey ever since then. I owe the guy my life because of this company now. And I, I think there's probably 80% of the people in this room that have been impacted by Brent would say that exact same thing. And so, you know, I can get emotional talking about Brent. Okay, I'm done talking about Brent. He's back in the room. <laughs> hey, Brent, how you doing? 
Brent, I was telling the true story about how we met. You're going to have to hear it from some other people later. But um, honestly, I owe my life to this man. I owe my friendship to this man. When Gene says we're golfing, um, you know, I was going to wear the shirt James bought me yesterday, but the one I had to buy him today trumped it. Um, but, you know, my friends, my closest friends are these people now in my circle. My circle's now big. I couldn't even wear my jacket up here because I had so much makeup on the sleeve from hugging a thousand people when I came in, it felt like. That, you are my life now, right? A lot of us in the room feel the same way. You are and will be my life as we continue. So I want to talk a little bit about my, my story. I'm going to show you my, my, my rev share. You know, I come in after Sheila with 10,000. It's all relative. There's people in this room right now going, Dude, five grand a month would change my life. That was a number that I remember hitting, five grand a month. And now 20 grand a month. It's been a life changer. Matter of fact, that 20 grand a month was on my board, and Brent was like, too small, go much bigger. <laughs> but for me, that number was real. That was freedom to me. Everybody's got a different story, right? Thank you. And we're going to add some zeros to things real shortly. But that was truly my story, that my, my number, it was on the board. So 20 grand in rev share would change my life in terms of what I had to do. And then with my other coaching income, different things, that was a number that would truly set me free. And now that number's happened, and now it's just wheels off, we're having a good time. But I want to back up a little bit. Brent Gove, when he reached out to me the very first time, he goes, Birdman, you got to look at this model, you got to look at this. And I said, hey, man, I'm not interested. Matter of fact, I just signed a franchise agreement like six days ago with Next Home. And it was not a direction I wanted to go after being KW and then independent, but Next Home looked like a model that might be a fit for me. And he goes, I just want you to look at it. Poke holes in it. Tell me what you think. You're my buddy. And I did. And uh, he put me together with Rob Flick. Now, back then, this is 2016. You'll see in my, in my next slide here my story. I actually joined in September of 2016. I was on the short list of people Brent called it in the beginning. But here's the deal. Rob Flick did it live back then. 7 a.m. in the morning, Brent calls me, goes, hey, I'm here for our meeting. Jump on the, you know, come into this. You're going to watch a webinar with my buddy Rob Flick. An hour and 37-minute webinar. That's what it was. But you know what? Here's the deal. After, and it's, Rob, Rob's not here, right? So I'm not, I love Rob, by the way. But he talked about himself for 20 minutes. That's just Rob. He talked about his Navy career, and he was, building, he was building a belief that he is a guy that I should listen to, and he did a great job with it. But I'm a high D. I was like, after three minutes, I was like, <laughs> six, you know, four, seven in the morning. Well, Brent dialed me and then put the phone on the pillow, went back to sleep with Kathy in bed for an hour and 37 minutes as I'm talking to Rob, Rob Flick. But honestly... It was about 23 minutes into it when he got done with his 20-minute introduction of who he is and why I should validate Rob that the light bulb came on. And, and my life would never be the same. And so, Bringo, thank you for that phone call. Um, you know, I had a presentation planned today, and I changed it because of Shelly and Craig. And the reason is, is because they nailed it. They literally nailed my exact presentation that I was going to talk about today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward to follow up because you guys crushed it, by the way. What? I'm not doing that. How do we back up? I think it's on some auto thing. Is there a way to stop it there? Or is it going to go every 10 seconds? So take a picture of that. What I want to talk about today is follow up because I, what I want to do is bring one nugget to everybody that you could leave here today and have value in your business, in your revenue share business. And one of the things I'm good at is designing and, and working with follow-up systems. And so what I think would be impactful for the people in this room, you know, we love looking up to the success of this business. We love looking up to Gene Fredericks and Sheila's and Shelley's and Brent's and, you know, Curtis Johnson. These guys are rock stars. But a lot of us, just getting your first five FLQA could mean a lot to you. Am I right about that? So what I want to do is give you some nuggets, maybe even one nugget if you look at it, that we can leave with today 
that helps you make a difference in your business. One thing. And that one thing is going to be the belief that follow-up really is the key to your massive success in this business. I've got a couple stories to share that I could easily do, but I, one that stands out to me is a, a gentleman in Utah, Jimmy Rex. Jimmy, I was introduced to a couple years ago. He's top 100 KW. Matter of fact, was interviewed by Gary Keller just not too long after I met him. And I just, Jimmy was a hard no. He was a, he was a guy that was really, you know, hey, dude, I've been Keller Williams my whole career. You know, what we all have heard at some point. And I stayed in touch with Jimmy. I stayed in touch with Jimmy typically about every 30 days because he was a cold, in my opinion. I'm going to talk about some timelines, right? He was a cold, so every 30 days, hey, Jimmy, how you doing? What's going on? What's new? What's happening? Well, that relationship really wasn't warming up after a year or so, so I just stayed in touch. And then I reached out and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. He has a great podcast. We got together, had that conversation about the podcast. Became a little more friends, a little more career building, you know, respect. And then here about three or four or six months ago, Jimmy raised his hand just a little further. And he moved from a cold to a warm. So now I stayed in touch with him every couple weeks. Right, so now every couple weeks I'm touching Jimmy. He's raised his hand, he's now from a cold to a warm. And then Jimmy made that call one day, he goes, hey dude, uh, EXP, talk to me. Right, God bless, right, that's the one. That's the phone call, we're like, you're trying to calm yourself down because they finally brought the goods. He raised his hand, became a hot in my world. That's every seven days that we're having communications now, right? So now we've changed the cadence of follow-up from 30 to 14 to seven days. As we were progressing, depending on what Jimmy needed, I would raise my hand and give him what he asked for. Right, we're building rapport. By the way, Craig and Shelley, great job today, guys. You, you guys crushed it, and I'll tell you what, you were on point. I saw your slides, everything was everything we've talked about, and I, I love and appreciate you for doing what you're doing, and thank you for the acknowledgement. Here's the deal, folks. It takes about 14 communications to build rapport enough to where you could ask. Okay, hear that again. 14 times to get to a point. Now, I want to be, I'm going to be a little kind of back and forth on this, because yes, you can call somebody and say, hey, I trust you, I respect you. Would you watch something for me and give me your feedback? Give me your opinion. Tell me what you think. It's okay to do that. But for the most part, people are going to be resistant to that, right? It, it doesn't matter how good the product is if they're not ready to hear the message, right? Same thing in network marketing businesses, you know. I have the best soap on the planet. It's the most amazing thing for your skin you've ever seen. I'm fine, right? It's just real. You could be looking for something for your face, but you don't want it right then. But so as we progress with these conversations, you're making little deposits of the equity bank account between in that relationship, right? It may go sooner than later, but know the number 14. That's a real number. So if you're looking at that and you're saying, hey, I've talked to this guy seven or eight times. You've got a couple more times that you can then say, hey, we've got a good relationship here. Do you mind if I ask you something? Would, you, would it be respectful? Would it offend you if I asked you to look at something? That's going to be valuable for you as opposed to trying to ask for something before you've given anything. Does that make sense for everybody? So back up on the cadence. If you're talking to somebody building a relationship and the conversation's going great, you can give them a warm or a hot status immediately based on their openness or what's going on for them. But again, if they're cold, it's about putting them in a funnel. It, it's not about trying to close them. That's, that was my problem when I started. I'm a closer, brother. I got this, right? If I go to the listing, I'm getting that b baby. I almost had to pay 100 bucks to Brent. I told him I wouldn't cuss on stage. But you know, that's the world we live in. We want closure. We want to get it. We, we want to leave with the listing, right? How many people would go to a listing appointment and say, I'm going to come back 14 times. I'm going to build some rapport here. Never happening. So really what I want to focus on with is building that relationship with them that brings value to the relationship. Think of it as a deposit, right? Deposit, 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 ask. Deposit, 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 ask. That will get you a lot more conversations that are in a place where they're actually building rapport with yourself and with them. Um, you know, we've got, uh, is Jack Perry in the house? 
Where's Jack? Stand up for me, my friend. You're out in the North 40. Jack, thank you for being here. Jack Perry, if you don't know, he was highlighted in Inman News recently. Jack Perry has one of the most dynamic real estate teams in Utah. He is under Mr. Don Yoakum. Don Yoakum is doing an amazing job. And the story with this is he knows Jimmy. All right? He knows Jimmy. They had a relationship. Jimmy, one guy called Jack Perry, a group of 53 agents from Utah that just onboarded. Jack, we love you. Thank you for being here. I think you've got a good team with you as well here today. The story here is you're only one dimension away from somebody like Brent Gove, Curtis Johnson, Gene Frederick, Sheila Fergeron, Shelley and Craig. You're only one conversation away from that dimension, right? So now uh, the Perry Group has come on board. Their influence is significant. The teams they're talking to are equal sized teams because that's the pond they swim in, right? Chuck Fazio, stud. Love you. I love that shirt, by the way. Iron sharpens iron. That's what this is about, folks. It's about building that relationship. So I know it's, it's really counterintuitive because, you know, we want to have the conversation, and Brent Gove does an amazing job. And for years, he, he had faith and believe in me, belief in me when James didn't. Where's James? I'm just kidding, James. I'm totally just kidding. A little bit of truth, but, it's, but it was good for me because Brent's like, no, 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 you don't know. This is my brother. My brother's got this. That's my brother. And um, James is like, yeah, he ain't, he ain't doing very much. But that's my brother. Just trust me. He's going to come on board. Woo! Right? But my story was I was coaching with Tom Ferry when I started. That's why you see a little bit of the date difference when I showed you. But I joined immediately with Brent. But, and I love Tom Ferry. This is an absolute admiration of Tom Ferry. I was told if I recruited an EXP that I would be asked to leave coaching. That was my sole income, really. I put myself in a position to where that was my new freedom. That was my ability to create freedom was to coach. I could coach from anywhere in the world with a laptop, baby, I'm free. Didn't understand it the same way I do today, right? So as much love as I have for that organization, I still coach within the Tom Ferry organization. I didn't understand, I didn't know what I didn't know. So it was two years before I really recruited my first agent and got into the belief system and it's because that man kept asking me to events. He kept saying, Randy, come to this, 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 come to this. And I finally went to Vegas. I got to meet Glenn, Glenn Sanford. Gene Frederick really forged our relationship and got to a point to where I said, I'm in. And now just a couple years later, you know, the life has changed for me. So Brent Gove, I thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me today. I hope that helps. And uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here.